Yeah, I think uh, it's the ability to take out the intermediary. And so, um, you know, in a decentralized world for people to be able to interact with each other in a free way, for me, ideologically is incredibly important. And when you, when you overlay that with technology and uh, the tools that you can enable that to occur with, I think that actually makes for a better experience in terms of how people can interact with each other. You know, the intermediaries, there's a time and place for them. I get it. But equally, you know, if we talk about money remittances for third world countries, it makes a huge difference. And to be able to do that in you know, sub four seconds at a tenth of a cent absolutely makes sense. That is AJ Milne, and this is episode 50 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 50 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. I'm Adriana Bellotti and today's guest is AJ Milne. AJ's journey, like many of those I've spoken to over the years, started with that curiosity about decentralized applications and how they can solve real-world problems. He is now amongst the most prolific entrepreneurs and investors in the Algorand ecosystem. And that is how we know each other from working together here in Australia. Now it's your turn to get to know him. Let's do it. Hi, AJ. Adriana, how are you? I'm really well. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Getting excited. Uh, This time of year is always pretty interesting as we get into the uh, rush before Christmas, but uh, uh, exciting times across uh, the ecosystem is you know and uh, for our various businesses and for the fund and um, so it's good and doing well thank you yes indeed exciting for you things have been on fire on your camp and you are going to tell me all about it in a second first let's go back in time and tell me how did you start your professional life and how blockchain came into play yeah of course uh Uh, Pretty hard to talk about yourself on this one, but uh, look, I think uh, uh, if I was to look at the journey I've been on, Adriana, it's really a mixture of entrepreneurialism, investment and advisory. And I've sort of been fortunate to do that across a couple of different uh, industries, whether that be in the blockchain space, the emerging tech space, and in some cases with uh, large multinationals. But if we break down each of those sort of uh, buckets from an entrepreneurial side, I uh, have started and led uh, my own businesses, both in the tech space and in the blockchain space. On the tech side, I uh, had launched a peer-to-peer marketplace and uh, part of the uh, the interest around that for me, outside of, you know, obviously the intellectual challenge, was a different business model. You know, how, how can individuals interact with each other and take out the middleman? And obviously, you can do the jump over into the blockchain space, and uh, a lot of your listeners will understand that straight away. And so for that transition to move into blockchain, which is really about 2016, I started to invest in that uh, within the space. Um, uh, it, it made sort of, from an ideological point of, point of view, it made sense. From a business point of view, it made sense. And then I think, you know, the individuals within the, within the industry uh, are out there trying to uh, break new ground. And I find that intellectually uh, interesting. And, you know, I'm a big supporter of founders. And so, uh, you know, you're talking to people who are, you know, giving it their all for their projects for their beliefs and I find that um, you know, that's it's a great place to be. From an investment side, uh, Adriana, I'd spent um, really the last 12 to 14 years uh, investing into really the emerging tech space, uh, predominantly here in Australia, a little bit in New Zealand being a Kiwi, uh, a little bit overse- overseas as well. Um, and managed to build up a portfolio of different businesses, both from direct investments, but also a uh, I'd spent time uh, with a couple of funds uh, and got on board early. And it was, it was interesting when I first came to Australia, I was sort of a 30-year-old and I was co-investing with, you know, people in their 50s and 60s and uh, learn a lot on that journey, uh, what to do and what not to do. And I've been very fortunate in terms of some of the outcomes of that. Uh, and that sort of led into investing in the blockchain space. And as I mentioned earlier, 2016, uh, the technology 
was put in front of me. Um, from an inquisitive point of view, I tried to learn as much as I could. And one way to do that for me personally is to invest in it. And so I did invest into some of the core chains. Obviously, with the run-up of the ICOs, I found that fascinating in terms of uh, that ideation that was going on. And you know, people were critical of it. And I think it was actually fantastic from the sense of uh, what it did change was the investment landscape. And so from the VC side, um, you know, it cut out a lot of the a lot of the VC process and it allowed these entities or these founders to interact with uh, their community um, in a very different and profound way. And I think we're s- still seeing the opportunities uh, and uh, the rollout of that, you know, three, four years, three years later. Um, also on the investment space, Adriana, I was fortunate to help set up a global CVC, so a corporate venture capital fund uh, for a advertising and media holding company based out of Paris. And that was, again, you know, an incredible journey. Uh, learn a lot uh, within that. Uh, you know, the, the owners of that uh, holding company are the Bellores, which are the French equivalent to the Murdochs and Packers here in Australia, or the Rockefellers in, in the US. And so it was great to see the way that they approach business and you know, from a VC uh, or C- a CVC side, um, looking at technology not only for the holding company but also for our partners and how do we integrate the, that into their sort of business models. And then lastly uh, is the advisory side and you know, I touched on it earlier, working with founders or business leaders both across the emerging space but also uh, in, in larger business um, and that's end to end, whether it's business strategy, whether it's capital raising, whether it's product you know, development, uh, whether it's team structures, uh, and getting that line of sight into um, how different business models work. And if I loop that all up together, I think that's been very beneficial when, you know, Michael, my business partner, and I uh, launched Mel Ventures, although we'd had um, a couple of businesses before that, um, it allowed us to look at the landscape in a slightly different way. And, you know, you know Michael, he's been on this podcast previously, you know, a real product uh, expert. Um, and together we've been able to navigate um, and create op- opportunities, um, which would probably good point to jump to our first business together, which was uh, Mel Gold. And again, I, I know Michael spoke about that on on the podcast, uh, but really digitising gold and uh, integrating into the existing gold supply chain um, and working with the gold trailers, the dealers, the vaults, the uh, the refineries, the assayers, uh, and we've managed to sign up you know, the largest gold trader in the world, uh, MKS Pamp, number four in the world, Horaeus, uh, number seven, and a whole sort of network. And a lot of it's from Michael's uh, background, you know, sort of a 20-year uh, industry expert. Um, and then from that, Adriana, we uh, spent a lot of time with Algren. They had invested into uh, into that business and got to know the team there and uh, incredible individuals and by far the best that uh, we've dealt with across the various chains. And I had spent a bit of time in Ethereum and had known some people in Cardano and Definity and EOS. Uh, and the team, you know, based in Boston, uh, just world class, you know, everywhere you go in that organisation, it's, uh, you feel fairly, um, fairly humbled. And uh, we talked a lot, of, lot with the team around sort of what the landscape looked like. And it was clear that we needed a bridge into the ecosystem. And so, you know, between Michael and I and the way that we like to operate, uh, saw that no one else was doing it. So why shouldn't we? And so, you know, you, you, you're, you've been close to the project and been incredibly benef- beneficial and helpful um, to the team and to what we've done there. And obviously, Algorand uh, went on mainnet a couple of weeks ago, which was fantastic and have... Yeah, an incredible group of uh, yeah, thank you, um, and thank you to the community as well. Like it's everybody's been on the journey with us, uh, an incredible group of investors as well. So yeah, thanks to them. And there's um, a lot of cool new announcements coming from Algomint. I know you cannot talk about them yet. I'm just sort of like precursing them to everyone listening. So I watch this space. Lots of things coming very soon. Thank you for the plug, and uh, I would love to be able to list them out, but you're right, really exciting. Um, I was just on a call with the team uh, moments ago, and um, uh, yeah, they've just been incredible, you know, right across the board. Um, you know, whether it's Harry or Misa, uh, Chris, Guru, Ravana, um, Amit, uh, obviously our group CTO, 
uh, you know, everyone has worked incredibly hard. So, you know, incredibly grateful uh, to them as a team and uh, to the broader sort of Mel group. Um, so thank you for the plug. And yes, there are there, there is some exciting news to come, Adriana. And you've been um, like a groundbreaker for Algorand in Australia, right? Isn't Meld Gold the first official official Algorand project to hit our land? Uh, yeah, we, we, we were, Adriana. It's, uh, uh, we were also, I think, one of the very first uh, projects on the protocol on Algorand. Uh, but here in Australia, uh, really tried to you know, break new ground. And as you know, the... Our grand community here is just incredible. Um, there's so many projects coming out of Australia now, and we were very fortunate to be the first one. Um, but you know, it's we're all in this together as a group of founders, and uh, some of the projects we see now. Um, and dare I say, Brisbane is a little bit of a hot spot. Uh, uh, some of the projects we see now are just um, going to be incredible. 2022 will be. Um, a great time for the Algorand ecosystem, but also uh, for uh, DeFi in the space. Uh, and the number of projects uh, and the talent that we're seeing is just world class. So, very exciting. It is indeed. Um, I guess Mail Ventures have been pretty much like the incubator for a lot of these products coming out of Australia, right? And we have been very fortunate in having you and Michael like spearheading of this, all of this, but you know, also mentoring uh, all these new people coming into blockchain and building their platforms. What are some of the um, challenges that they have faced to begin with that you could share with us? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think, um, and that was going to be the last part of the journey I was going to walk you through, is obviously the evolution of Mel Ventures and uh, the work we're trying to do here um, and globally. But for the local market, I think uh, one of the challenges uh, that you know these lead contributors or founders or team leads have faced is uh, around uh, building out the teams. And we've been very big in terms of encouraging a fully decentralized type of model, hiring people re remotely. And so across the group, uh, from a Mel Ventures side, you know, we're up to uh, just over 55 people uh, across six different continents, everyone working remote. Uh, and so we certainly, certainly encourage uh, those team leads uh, to follow suit and be comfortable to uh, look at people, whether they are in North America, South America, Africa, Asia or Europe, uh, and then build in the processes um, to uh, make sure that you know, they're working efficiently, there's culture there. Uh, so that would be, probably be my biggest one, Adriana, is around the team. And then second, secondary to that would be uh, really the regulatory environment. And I know that that sort of uh, is coming along, um, but making sure that, uh, you know, that each of these businesses has been set up the right way, um, are following the guidelines, um, and then obviously uh, engaging with the communities. You've mentioned that you were dabbling in crypto and blockchain since pretty much 2015, 2016. So what was it about Algorand that made you go, okay, I really want to move along with this. I want to take this forward and build in this platform. Yeah, great question, Adriana. I, I think it was twofold. One was uh, investing in uh, the space early. You know, I did uh, spend a lot of time looking at the other chains and uh, yeah, there, there was just these fundamental issues that I couldn't quite uh, intellectually get over and you know whether it was the gas cost, whether it was the speed, you know how, how the protocol was set up and uh, I was fortunate enough to spend some time uh, doing a blockchain course through MIT and obviously Silvio well, he was one of the um, professors there and lecturers. He was one of the lecturers on the course. And for me, it was a bit of the yaha moment of uh, when he was talking through you know, his vision with Alger. And this was pre going to mainnet. Um, a lot of the uh, mental hurdles that I'd had with other chains sort of just dissipated. And I, and I thought, this is really, you know, here is somebody who is solving a lot of the, the fundamental issues. 
clearly you know, world class and the more that I dug into it during that course and then uh, post the realization that you know this is a protocol that really could be global it has longevity and when you look at the trilemma you know around scalability and speed and decentralization and he had solved uh, those issues uh, and the way that he articulated it uh, really made sense for me and so uh, when we when Michael and I first met and we were looking through the the Mel Gold uh, sort of roadmap and how we want to build it out we went off and uh, spoke with Ethereum and spoke with some of the other chains and uh, went and met with the team uh, and spoke with the team in Boston, the Algorand team. And again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, sort of their understanding of the value proposition of Mel Gold and what we were looking to do, but also being able to put solutions on the table to the questions that we had about how we would scale a product like that really brought a lot of comfort. And so it was twofold, really, Adriana. One was just spending time on the other chains and then going through a course with Silvio and then actually talking with the Algorand team and understanding uh, you know, their deep expertise and how they were looking at the next sort of five to 10 to 20 years, not just the next 12 to 24 months. Yes, they are indeed an impressive team over there. I find myself very lucky to have been able to not just spend time with Silvio, but also be working with the foundation and you know see the evolution of all this. Okay, so from peer-to-peer -peer marketplace to peer-to-peer -peer finance, <laughs> what is the big deal with this, AJ? What is the big deal of peer-to-peer? -peer? Yeah, I think uh, it's the ability to take out the intermediary. And so, um, you know, in a decentralized world for people to be able to interact with each other in a free way, for me, ideologically, is incredibly important. And when you, when you overlay that with technology and uh, the tools that you can enable that to occur with, I think that actually makes for a better experience in terms of how people can interact with each other. You know, the intermediaries, there's a time and place for them. I get it. But equally, you know, if we talk about money re remittances for third world countries, it makes a huge difference. And to be able to do that in, you know, sub four seconds at a tenth of a cent absolutely makes sense. Um, you know, if we were to rewind to the other side of, you know, where Algorand is, you know, with this, you know, negative carbon protocol, and they really are thinking about the environment. And a lot of the projects, as you know, within the space, are thinking about the environment and carbon credits. And it's just a different way of, uh, of people interacting. And I think that's incredibly positive. Even the NFT projects on Algorand are environmentally conscious. Uh, it's it's incredible, yeah. It's Algo Anna and Benji have really um, led the way here. But in terms of some of the other platforms coming out, I mean, you know, there's the original only team, and uh, there's a joint venture with the Hippo guys uh, is really exciting, and they'll be launching their first uh, NFTs in 2022. You have Zestbloom, you know, fantastic team there as well, and I think everyone is looking at a the technology of uh, NFTs on Algorand and all the positives there and no forking and finality and the speeds and the costs, etc. But as you said, it's uh, also um, how do we make this a better experience from the consumers and how do we make it the right experience for the consumers? And that does include uh, having it negative uh, from a carbon point of view. And you also mentioned that there is a time and a place for intermediaries and hello, argument, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's a, that's the time and the place example for when in a peer-to-peer -peer market you would need an intermediary. Would you like to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Uh, and so for the, for the listeners who don't know about argument, yeah, it's a bridge uh, into the Algorand ecosystem and we've just launched on mainnet, focused initially on uh, BTC and and then Ethereum or ETH will be coming across and then there's a whole roadmap that uh, you teased on earlier. And, and why it's important is uh, sort of the capital on the sidelines that are looking to come into the Algorand ecosystem and power out, power up some of these DeFi projects and to provide liquidity and you know to provide the consumer experience. And so that is an important intermediary and you are right uh, to enable, I guess, the next uh, evolution of projects and platforms. And again, um, you know, you're across a lot of them and you've seen them in 2022 for DeFi. I think at the moment there's uh, three or four projects that are live on mainnet. Uh, within you know, the next four months, there's going to be 15 and then 
by mid next year, there's going to be 20, 25, 30 plus. And all of those are going to need liquidity in one way or another. And so Algament provides that. But more importantly, and it does tie to our previous conversation, uh, Adriana, is that is a carbon negative bridge. And so every Bitcoin that comes across, you know, we've brought carbon credits against it. And that means that uh, the Go BTC, so the wrapped BTC in the Algorand ecosystem is carbon negative. Um, and as we go from 300,000 users to 300 million to 3 billion, uh, the reality is, is that it is our responsibility as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as founders, as users of these platforms, that we do have that sort of social and green conscience and look at ways to improve what we're doing, as we always should be and we always do across our businesses. Uh, and this is one way to do it. And then obviously the other side comes into the team and the way that we work with our team and support them. And uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, we have 50, 60 odd staff across six different continents, different time zones, fully remote. And how can we make their work life better and their experience into these different platforms a more profound and intellectually challenging one? But uh, uh, we do have that responsibility to make sure that we are forward thinking in terms of what we're building and you know the carbon negative piece is a strong key piece of that but also how we look at the next five to ten years to 20 years and again this is why Algorand is so interesting so many of these other protocols Adriana are about the next 12 months and it's all sort of spikes and uh, flashy lights whereas you come into the Algorand ecosystem and you know the business owners are trying to build long-term platforms the investors are thinking long term the core protocol certainly is thinking long term and yeah you know, that brings a lot of confidence uh, from our side as founder operators but also as investors yeah i think it, it's very important to highlight how we impact you know our ecosystem not just as in our community but also our planet is a really important um, thing to focus on 100 percent. all right we are getting to the pointy end and here come the quick three here we go what book are you currently reading great question can i answer this two ways i hope yes you can so the first one um would be is the hobbit uh, so reading that with the kids and um, yeah, I read to them every night or I try to and we've done the Harry Potter and we've done some other classics and we got onto The Hobbit and you know, part of it is just about expanding their imagination and you know, there's some interesting, uh, interesting stories tied into you know, the main, um, main narrative of The Hobbit. Uh, and then the other one is not so much books, uh, Adriana, but uh, I am an avid podcast listener and so listen to a variety whether they are investment uh, or innovation type of podcasts. And I use that really as the way to keep up with you know, what's going on in the world. I cheat a little bit, dare I say. I put it on one and a half times speed so I can get through them more quickly. But uh, Everybody does that, AJ. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You've given me a lot of confidence. Thank you. Um, uh, so I, I treat probably the podcast as my books at the moment, but uh, I've always loved a, a good uh, hardcover next to the beard. Oh, me too. What's your favorite crypto resource? Yeah, great question again, Adriana. Look, uh, I'm going to do a double double answer on this one as well. Um, so from a, uh, it does tie into the podcast. So uh, one of the podcasts, um, I'm not sure how many of your uh, listeners would have heard of it, but uh, the Investors Podcast, and that's sort of split into two. So one is uh, traditional, and you could do the usual Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger and Ray uh, Dalio, and uh, this sort of split the Investors Podcast into uh, Bitcoin Fundamentals, and Preston Pish, one of the presenters on that, has really done a deep dive into the Bitcoin network, and I find that fascinating, the way he presents information through his podcast and who he has on it. I think is world class and the other one on the the podcast side would be uh, unconfirmed so uh, Laura Shin I think it is and she's an ex-journalist and again uh, her style of uh, interviewing and how she digs into uh, specific topics you know it's it, I find it incredibly informative uh, my second answer is really talking to the network. So talking to people uh, like yourself, like the, fa the founders of businesses, the investors, uh, and understanding what they're looking at and what are the projects they're interested in, in, and then 
taking that away and uh, jumping online and trying to work out how these platforms and protocols work and then coming back to whoever gave me this this slice of uh, genius uh, inspiration and uh, talk them talk to them about uh, you know, their thoughts on it so that's probably how I look at uh, crypto resources amazing that's um, a bit different from how other people answer this question so I really love that uh, and lastly, what is your favorite project? You can be biased. There's no problem in that. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well, Adriana. Thank you. Um, so, so I think it ties into conversation earlier we're having around the NFT space and the original only platform uh, that is coming out of uh, Meadow Ventures. The JV with the Hippo team and Sir Sirkhan's come over to help run that and Martin, uh, the business lead on that. There's just such an excellent team, uh, Sarah and Ambrose and uh, the rest of the team there. Great IP coming out, um, so I'll give them a bit of a plug. 2022, they are going to have some fantastic partners, which is uh, great. And then, of course, Algomint, I'd be biased, I'm allowed to be biased. Uh, and then looking across our portfolio, you know, Pact, x Prismatic, um, Tiny Man, you know, the founders or the lead contributors of those businesses are just world class in their own way and what they're building out is so critical in terms of the broader uh, ecosystem, uh, not only within Algorand but broader blockchain because I think they're going to have a fairly profound impact in terms of uh, how mainstream consumers enter the space and the experience they have and you know, we are now moving into a space where we really do have to have excellent UI, UI um, UX uh, and talk and communicate to the broader community base in a different way. And again, community is going to be key in 2022 uh, from where I sit. So those would be a few of the projects. So really, Mel Ventures is your favorite project and everything that's under it. <laughs> <laughs> you said I was allowed to be biased. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. It's just because you mentioned like five or six. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. I, I, was, I, I might have been a bit cheeky with that. But interesting enough, like uh, j- jokes aside, I, I look across the broader Mel Ventures group and whether that's businesses that we've invested into or that have come out of the incubator and the the talent Adriana and you know a lot of them they are just incredible humble individuals who are really passionate about what they do and so of course yeah you know, there's a whole list of uh, other businesses that I I haven't uh, mentioned but we're very fortunate and um, yeah it is all about people and it is all about culture and um, you know the the various businesses are doing extremely good jobs so. yes they are it's a bunch of great people. Absolutely. All right. That's it. We got to the end. Thank you so much. Absolutely. My pleasure, Adriana. Always good to catch up. And um, thank you to all the work you do in the community. It is uh, it is it is incredible and all the founders recognize it. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, AJ. And that is the excellent AJ Milne. Get in touch with AJ. Connect on Twitter and LinkedIn. Links are in the description for you. Check out his projects. And if you have an interesting idea, reach out for a chat because Melt Ventures is supporting a lot of projects in Australia and overseas. The next project could be yours. That's it from me for today and for 2021. This is the last episode of the year. Coming back in 2022 with episode 51 and more. Always, always a pleasure being here with you, sharing these stories. Thank you so much for your support through the year. If this was your first episode, welcome. I hope you come back and I will see you all on the next block. Bye.